Hi guys, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today's topic is acute coronary syndrome. So when it comes to cardiac chest pain, it can be divided quite broadly into two main categories. So at the less severe end of the spectrum, we have stable angina. And at the more severe end, we have this umbrella term called acute coronary syndrome. So let's start off by talking about stable angina. So stable angina is defined as chest pain on exertion that is relieved by rest. And it is quite simply caused by a mismatch in the oxygen supply and demand of the myocardium. And this tends to be due to a narrowing in the coronary blood vessels, typically due to atherosclerosis. So the management of stable angina typically involves reducing this mismatch as much as possible. So beta blockers such as bisoprolol are very often used because they reduce the heart rate and hence reduce myocardial oxygen demand. GTN spray can help open up those coronary arteries. Risk factor modification is of course very, very important. And some patients may also undergo stenting of their coronary arteries to try and maintain that patency and prevent the angina from occurring. So then we get to acute coronary syndrome, which is quite simply defined as the symptoms that occur due to sudden reduced blood flow to the heart muscle. And there's three different subsets that constitute acute coronary syndrome, and they are differentiated based on their ECG findings and a blood test result. So the first thing that you do in a patient presenting with chest pain is an ECG. And the main thing that you're looking for is ST elevation. And if there is ST elevation, it is an ST elevation myocardial infarction. If there is no ST elevation, then you look at the troponins. So troponins are enzymes which are typically found within the cardiomyocytes, and hence you wouldn't expect there to be high levels within the peripheral blood. However, in conditions where you have damage inflicted on the heart muscle, those troponins will leak out of those cells and then be detectable within the peripheral blood. So if you have high troponins, that's suggestive of cell death and hence suggestive of an infarction. So the presence of elevated troponins with no ST elevation is a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. On the other hand, if troponins are not raised, it's considered unstable angina pectoris, which is a condition in which you get chest pain at rest due to ischemia of the myocardium. However, the cells haven't started dying yet and hence there is no infarction at present. So in terms of managing a patient with an acute coronary syndrome, bear in mind that although it is important to figure out which of those three subsets the patient falls into, when you see a patient, all you know is that they have chest pain. You wouldn't be able to tell until you have an ECG and the troponins whether it is a STEMI, NSTEMI or unstable angina. Nonetheless, you would start the generic ACS management. So this involves giving intravenous morphine, which helps relieve the chest pain and settle the patient. Nitrates as well can also help relieve the strain on the heart and hence reduce the chest pain. And most importantly, dual antiplatelet therapy should be started. And that involves giving a loading dose of aspirin, so 300 milligrams, along with a loading dose of either clopidogrel, 300 milligrams, or ticagrelor, 180 milligrams. So that is the immediate management of an acute coronary syndrome. If someone is hypoxic as well, you would start them on oxygen, but that shouldn't be the norm for all patients if they are saturating fine. So if we skip ahead to the long-term management of a patient who has had an ACS in hospital, they will likely be discharged with several new medications. So they will continue dual antiplatelet therapy at a lower dose. In addition to that, they will be discharged with a beta blocker, an ACE inhibitor and a statin. And all of these medications have been shown to improve long-term outcomes in patients with ACS. So that's the generic management for ACS. If we focus more specifically on ST elevation, there's a few extra things to consider. So ST elevation myocardial infarction is caused by a complete occlusion of a coronary artery. And the aim of treatment is quite simply 
to reperfuse that area of the heart as quickly as possible. So how we go about doing this depends on the onset of the symptoms. So first and foremost, if the symptoms have occurred within 12 hours, you should consider percutaneous coronary intervention. So this involves sending a patient to a cath lab where they can have a PCI done and a stent inserted to reopen that coronary artery. If the symptoms have gone on for more than 12 hours, they're likely to first have an angiogram where you assess the patency of the coronary arteries and a stent can be inserted if it's deemed necessary. So with PCI, there's one caveat to consider. The PCI is only conducted at centres which have the appropriate personnel and facilities, whereas thrombolysis is quite simply just the administration of a thrombolytic drug. So if the patient cannot be taken to a PCI centre within two hours of the point at which they could potentially be given thrombolysis, you would then choose thrombolysis instead of PCI. We move on quickly to the management of NSTEMI. Patients will be given Fondaparinux, 2.5 milligrams subcutaneously, and it's a direct factor 10A inhibitor, which uh, helps thin the blood and has been shown to improve outcomes. Then they will be risk stratified using various different scoring methods, such as the GRACE score. If patients are deemed high risk, they are likely to undergo an angiography quite soon, which will assess the patency of the blood vessels and the need for stenting. Whereas if they are low risk, they may be deemed suitable only for medical management at that point in time. So if we just have a quick look at what stenting actually looks like, here we have a coronary artery with some atherosclerosis that's causing a narrowing. Stenting essentially involves passing a catheter into the coronary artery that we're interested in and essentially deploying the balloon and then removing that catheter whilst leaving the stent in place. And that stent can help maintain the patency of that coronary artery, thereby preventing ischemia and infarction. Thank you.